Good evening to Miss Mini. My name is Aishmi Lawrence. I'm from Group 2. The topic of unsuccessful, unsuccessful of national development policy. I would like to put out two points for this debate. Firstly, is public uncertainty. Malaysia's domestic politic uh, turbulence threatens to derail, to derail its foreign policy. Foreign policy begins at home and the country has experienced nearly and presented political instability over the past two years. As we know that uh, the first 2020 were changed, 2020 or 2021, two, pre uh, two prime ministers were changed in a year. Then again, the same thing happened last year. Uh, in a year, changed two prime ministers. Two prime ministers were changed in a year. So, it was a pattern to be seen in past few years. So every kind of rules and regulations has been changed. In this point, what I'm trying to say is the domestic political turbulence has been detrimental to Malaysia's democracy and it demands an immediate response. A backdoor negotiation of the or by the MPs in seeking a new coalition rather than through a clear mandate people is rattling the country's democratic reputation. Despite a case figure or cease, uh, sorry, ceasefire among MPs that has resulted from the bipartisan confidence and supply agreement broke in, brokered in September 2021, this has not stopped the power plays that must ultimately be remedied, remedied to an election. So where do I find all these points are from this article? This article that I've read through, it's all about the Malaysia, what have been, what have they faced past two years for the public uncertainty category. Besides that, Malaysia's um, internally, the prolonged political in, in Brogolia is a Ticking bomb for Malaysia's foreign policy. If it remains unresolved, foreign policy begins at home, as the saying goes, and Malaysia must get its own house in order to avoid a catastrophic situation in dealing with growing regional uncertainty. A competent and stable government will ensure a seamless foreign policy, policy strategy that also can withstand external challenges related to maritime disputes while managing emerging security alliance and cooperation in the region. So a government, as a government, uh, sorry, as a Malaysian, the next government must be freshly elected by the people and the mandate must be best owned for the government by a genuinely democratic process so that these rules are passed to discourage party hopings by MPs. We also need a strong, stable and competent government appointed through a fair election will also help Malaysia to fulfill its potential and capability on the regional and international efforts fronts and to be content with strategic uncertainties amid big power rivalry to say nothing of the pressing domestic challenges. Because this uh, government a government that is elected by the majority will also be able to rally the mass and unify the population on the most pressing issues of the day. The imperative of the economic and security cooperation at the international level, it also requires the support of the people or the society or at least a popular mandate to actually initiate the move or the steps they need to take so that they won't fail or fail actually. Despite as a Malaysian, foreign policy not necessarily needing approval from the people, but the public plays an instrumental or vital role in either impeding or aiding the country's foreign foreign policy orientations. This combination, which is internal and external challenges, can demand that Malaysia will get its own house in order. So calling for an early general election is one of the mechanisms by which the government can gain a fresh mandate. 
the longer Malaysia waits to stabilize the country, the greater the negative impact on the country foreign policy. So with the repercussion that could last for years to come, we should have a strong and stable government and that ensures our ability to the ability to implement a sound and vigorous foreign policy policy that can respond to the increasingly demanding external conditions with with no improvements or with not uh, fresh political fresh candidates or candidates Malaysia actually can afford cannot afford to contend with these uncertainties while facing unresolved domestic problems. Because during the summit, Malaysian Prime Minister, our, uh, our Ismail Sabri Yaakob understood, underscored his country, which is our country, stands on pressing issues such as global supply chain security, the war in Ukraine and the Israel-Palestine conflict while foreseeing the expansion of foreign investment in Malaysia. So, next we have here is second second point is inflation 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 or corruption. Malaysians worry about inflation, but corruption is still biggest is the biggest concern. So Malaysians are increasingly worried about inflation and unease about COVID nineteen residues. But financial and political corruption remains the biggest concern. So when it comes to corruption or inflation, it's already it's already involves financial. So past two years from 2020 to 2021, I can say that majority has lost or has been uh, has been facing low financial, low income, less income. So no any income at all like suiciding and so many negative things happens. So it's all a worry about inflation until like people cannot even think what to do next. And then it turn out to be like unstable with the health condition, mental, mental health, physical health, everything was down. So it's monthly poll May 2022 founded that from this article. From this article founded that 27% of nations are worried about inflation as I said up to three months on month like time to time we had first we said we will have a lockdown for three months then again continue another three months three months three months so everyone was like worried 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 compared to me it's low of seven percent in August 2021 2020 was the worst like people were so worried and all that Meanwhile, just 31% are now concerned about COVID-19 from its peak of 83% also in August last year. So the Malaysia, our Malaysia, opened its border in April to mark a new pace in, in, in our journey through the COVID-19 pandemic. On May 10, the Monetary Policy Committee raised the overnight policy rate by 25 basis points to 2% citing a firmer economic recovery and improved domestic demand and exports growth. So, with such recovery in consumer demand combined with increased pressure and supply chains brought on the, by, by global events such as the war in Ukraine, concern about inflation is now on the risk. Besides, besides, um, besides inflation, we also have this cor a corruption in unsuccessful businesses. Same thing they face, which while inflation is worrying, so businesses have not been the highest at the top sales how it was supposed to be. So it was badly impacted for the ones that having own businesses like handcraft things, uh, businesses like newspapers, businesses like um, restaurants, cinema, like MBO will shut down totally until like GSC had to board it. Like you see, it's actually used to be MBO used to be very MBO theater used to be very uh, well known back then. But now during now during the COVID time, 
they had to be sold because of they cannot run the business anymore. And some of the staff or workers have been political system, a good education system especially. So nowadays, most of the working places for the interview, they are not seeing how much of education you have, how high education you have, but they are seeing how much of general knowledge you have, how much of skills do you have, how fast learner are you. So this is what people are saying. But what, how, how is it going to work when, when the political, not to say political, but the government has been changed the education system. They know you face no PT too. And I don't know how fast or how soon it's not going to be have SEM. Because for me, I have faced UPS, I have faced PT3, and I have faced SPM. So for me, UPS now, I have faced, and it's really good for me. Because it determines your level that you will need to go for the next level of schooling. It's not wrong to have the exam, but if you totally stop, and people, oh sorry, students will be like very slow and very like playful. They won't be active, they won't be strict, or they won't be disciplined in their self need to study. They won't discipline yourself. I need to score good marks. So it's very tough to develop own students, own students' personal personality actually. So how they are going to develop the country's policy? So it, in the self or personally must be developed. Then only we can, uh, we can call it uh, do services for the country, mm, something like that. So my 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 opinion would be, firstly, educational system must be the stable. Okay, firstly, political system must be stable. Secondly, um, from the political, we know government, we know this education thing, we know we have uh, HR, we have the sports, we have the health and health and science, we have uh, so many various departments of governments or politicals we have. So all their ideas, their advices is how it's going to be transformed to the kids. Kids who are studying nowadays until they have no exam like UPS and PG3. So their school starting badges also has been changed. So when after a month of having a pandemic and lockdown, when back to school, students are being so lazy in some certain schools, I am in an NGO, so I have done two programs, and we are going programs on programs for PDP program. We call it a program, uh, like program complete and project. So the schools are requesting us NGO from me. It's those who are like need motivational, you know, like because those HM and the headmaster schools telling us that this student, not only this one two students, but most of the students are not interested in studies. They feel like they feel like they lost. They like just want to be playful. They're not even serious in studies. So they were requesting us to do programs so that to give motivation to these kids how on how to be um, interested in studies, how to score well. They it's very difficult. The student want to sit for an exam, they will like, they won't have any, any special or government exam, they will straightly go to STM, then they will not be prepared, they won't know that how it's going to be, it's like very first time they have to go into face the uh, public exam, so like, it's also actually one of the way to make the students being disciplined, that's all, so that's all for me. Anything I would like to add, um, to not have Publics and communities, communities to lose to lost trust on leaders. So, government should bring up more like more trust, more process, uh, more process like on the elections proper way. Then only these publics, all of these publics, are will be very good and will have the proper trust, proper proper respect. When a government does not have integrity and accountability and does not walk to does not walk to talk, people's trust is eroded. That's all from me. Thank you.